Except they know who lives there, and it's some shifty drug addict looking dude is like, <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna be like, let's call the police, shall we, just in case. Because <laughs> that like, guy doesn't look like Mrs. Jones, does he? Does he? This is all about Florida Man. Uh, what happens here is Danny writes me a script, I'm gonna read it, make it a little bit more shit, and then Sam is gonna sprinkle in what is he gonna do? Say it with me now! Some of the finest vintage memes. Mwah! A couple of years ago, the Florida Man birthday challenge was briefly all the rage on social media. I don't remember this at all. And I'm familiar with social media, I've been there once or twice. You were invited to look up Florida Man on Google, followed by the month and day of your birthday, and share the top headline in the results, which exposed exactly what kind of zany stunts he was pulling while you were blowing out your candles. Oh my! Month and day! Uh, Florida Man, 15th May. Let's see, shall we? Florida Man slapped girlfriend with cheeseburger, kicked her downstairs. Holy sh! Like, slapping someone with a cheeseburger, if it wasn't a woman, could be seen as a joke. Like, you could be at McDonald's, like, definitely would do this as a teenager. You'd just be having, you know, your friend would sit down, he's bought, like, a delicious meal, and he's looking forward to it. He opens up the cheeseburger, you just grab it and slap his face with it. That would be hilarious. Pushing them down the stairs later would be less acceptable. Doing this as an adult would be less acceptable. Doing it to a woman is less acceptable than doing it to your girlfriend. Less acceptable still. Maybe a random woman <laughs> would be slightly... It's all equally bad, isn't it? What are you up to, Florida man? The victim was visibly upset and covered with particles of the food item at the bottom of the stairs. Holy sh**. <laughs> You're welcome. Share your stories below. That's what the comments are for. No, the comments are for correcting my pronunciations, apparently. <laughs> my own result was a bit, a bit disappointing. I got Florida man fleas after crashing truck into Chuck E. Cheese, which isn't particularly interesting, but at least it was bordering on the poetic. Danny, <laughs> slapping with the cheeseburger wins. Oh, I checked out Simon's results and this was even worse. It was not worse, Danny. He got Florida Man slapped sleeping girlfriend with cheeseburger, kicks her downstairs, which doesn't contain much in the way of either belly laughs or poetry. Danny, I disagree. I think I made it hilarious. I'm just a comedy wizard. Harry, for God's sake, you're a wizard. A wizard? I'm just Harry. If Prince Harry had joined in the birthday fun, and I'm sure he did. <laughs> what else is he up to? He probably would have been getting interviewed by Oprah. Ah! Dealing with systemic racism in his family? <laughs> Shouldn't laugh about that. Some pretty crazy shit. Although, I mean, who was actually... Su I, I mean, the, the media portrayed this as surprise. The royal family. A bunch of old people. A racist. <laughs> Shocking. I mean, it's terrible, but it's not surprising. He had been quite pleased with the more absurdly traditional entry of Florida man suspected of smelling women's feet at the library leads police on a scooter chase. Mwah! Meanwhile, Donald Trump and Joseph Stalin's birthday headlines were both arguably appropriate. In Trump's case, he gets Florida man shoots shoot Sarkin to see if bullet is in chamber, which sounds like Trump's kind of logic, while Stalin gets Florida man tries to pay for fast food with bag of weed. We all share everything, comrade. Why you not give me cheeseburger? I give you a great bag of weed. Uh, which I think would have gained Stalin's approval as one small step on the path to subverting the filthy capitalist system. I mean, except then you'd eventually go down that path, wouldn't you? Like, it's why capitalism is kind of effective, because you're like, oh yeah, we'll trade things for burgers. And then it's like, yeah, but I don't want the weed. And it'd be like, what if I give you a coin? that is some sort of substitute for the weed, and you can trade it for some- And look, you've got currency! Oh my god! Coincidence? I think not! If Florida Man was celebrating his own birthday, I'd like to think that it'd take the day off from doing crazy and maybe just go for a quiet drink with a couple of friends and a stolen alligator. And I'm sure the rest of the world would step up to the plate during his well-deserved break. After all, Florida Man doesn't have a complete monopoly on generating comical and bizarre and utterly outrageous headlines. It turns out... There's a little bit of Florida man in all of us. I've always said that if there was one place in America where I would fit in best, it would be Florida. <laughs> Illinois teenage... I know it's Illinois, but Illinois. Uh, teen burglar kills goldfish because he didn't want to leave any witnesses. I want with a three second memory. Am I right, Peter? No, because goldfish is actually have a much longer than three second memory as I covered in depth in rather excruciating detail in another video. I believe it was on Today I Found Out, another channel that I host that is more popular than this one. 
Uh, we've recently covered how those crazy European courts of yesteryear often like to put animals on trial. Danny was the last thing I recorded, literally yesterday. But, e but even they may have thought twice about summoning animals to court as a credible witness. You're really not going to get anything of value out of a goldfish. But this was clearly a cause for concern for one of the teenage burglars from Arlington Heights in Chicago who targeted a local house in 2011, which had recently been evacuated following a fire. If you're gonna burgle somewhere, you're really like, yeah, yeah, I'll rob the place that has burned down because everyone wants stolen goods that they're purchasing to smell of smoke. I mean, I guess the burglars aren't big brains, are they? Ah. The young thieves, aged between 15 and 17, pocketed a Nintendo game system, a bunch of DVDs and video games, a BB gun, jewelry, and a fire safe containing personal papers and photographs. <laughs> that is gonna be useful. You crack it open, you're like, oh, for God's sake, it's just family photographs. Why are people so sentimental? Why do they keep money in safes? Or gold. But just to be absolutely sure that the pet goldfish wasn't going to squeal to the cops, one of the teenagers poured hot sauce, mustard, ketchup, and spices into the fish tank, poisoning all three of the innocent fishy bystanders caught up in the horror. Who would do that? Who could possibly do that? Sergeant Mike Hernandez of the Arlington Heights Police Department revealed, It's a little disturbing. According to the police report, he looked at the fish tank and said, we can't leave any witnesses. <laughs> it's not clear where exactly the scales of justice led the three burglars, but all of them faced residential burglary charges in the juvenile court, whilst the fish poisoner faced an additional charge of cruelty to animals. Most of the stolen items were thankfully tracked down to local pawn shops. Uh, apparently, one of the police officers quipped that the goldfish would have made useless witness anyway, as they only have a three-second memory, so they wouldn't have been able to remember the burglary with any deep clarity. But in fact, the memory of a goldfish can span as long as five months, so the burglar clearly knew exactly what he was doing. Great. Missing Iceland woman unwittingly joined search party looking for herself. <laughs> Holy sh**. The woman in question very probably didn't come from Iceland. She was a member of a party traveling through the country on a bus tour in 2012. Her identity was never revealed, so she might have even come from Florida. Probably, if we're honest. Am I right? The bus had stopped for a while near the oh in Iceland with the names of your places. I mean, holy sh**. What was that volcano called? Like blah, 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 volcano. Uh, El Digijigababa Canyon. And the rest of the party disembarked from the bus. The woman stayed on board for a few moments to freshen up. It must have been quite a transformation. How do you freshen up on a bus? It's like, yeah, just got to powder my nose. Gonna use that horrible, smelly, septic toilet. <laughs> it's kind of like got the ceiling that's about here. So you're like, oh. Oh, oh. I always wonder, once if the bus crashes when you're in one of those toilets, you're gonna have a really bad time. Your neck is just gonna be like snapped and then you'll be drowning because you can't move your body in like the feces that have come out of the toilet and are now swimming. It, I mean, Jesus. I oh, that is a bad time. I'm Steve-O and this is the Pooh Cocktail Supreme. Later that evening, the rest of the party were questioning the whereabouts of the other woman without realizing she was standing with the group, albeit now wearing a bit of makeup and wearing different clothes. Upon hearing that there was a missing passenger and not recognizing the description of herself, the woman joined the extensive search party, which dragged on until 3 a.m. It's this got to be so embarrassing when it's like, no, 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 we're looking for you. Oh. Who could possibly do that? You. In total, 50 people spent the night hiking around the volcanic terrain and the Coast Guard was getting ready to dispatch a helicopter before everyone re finally realized where they'd been going wrong. To be fair to the woman who became the subject of ridicule in the subsequent press headlines for not recognizing her own description, it sounds as if that none of this was actually her fault. All she'd done was change her clothes, get off the bus, and hear the news that somebody was missing. The description couldn't have been that great if the rest of the party had failed to realize that they were trying to describe the woman standing right in front of them. Also, why would you assume that the description was of you if you weren't missing? You'll be like, well, I'm not missing. It's obviously not going to be me. What are the chances that someone has reported me missing since I got off the bus, like, uh, stayed on the bus like 10 minutes ago? This is crazy. Still embarrassing, but it's not her fault in any way, is it? And I'm not sure I would re necessarily recognize a vague description of myself under those circumstances. You know, why guy with glasses, autumn blonde hair, smells a bit like rotting turtle. Oh, shit. Rotting Turtle's on net if you want to buy my fragrance. Rotting Turtle smells absolutely nothing like Rotting Turtle. It smells fantastic. Like, people be like, I'm missing. My description, bald guy, glasses, beard. So we're looking for a YouTuber. 
<laughs> Maybe the guy in charge of the tour could have just looked up in the passenger looked up the passenger's name, or possibly even just on a quick head count. Still, there's always nice to hear a story with a happy ending, and maybe the woman had always intended the bus door to be a spiritual journey upon which she really hoped to find herself. But a boom boom New Hampshire student who electrocuted own nipples sues teacher for not warning him that electricity is dangerous. You gotta move to Florida with that. To be honest, mate. I've remarked before on how schools never seem to teach kids the things they really need to know in life. How to stop people from jumping the queue at the bar, how to spot an eBay scam, what not to do on a first date, where to bury a faulty carbon monoxide detector, how to unblock a sink trap after you've accidentally poured lamb fat down the sink again. Yeah, I mean, all of these things would be actually pretty useful. I mean, other than burying a faulty carbon monoxide detector. <laughs> That's just you, Daddy. <laughs> in the case of one student from the city of Dover in New Hampshire, we can also add another old chestnut to the list. Why attaching live alligator clips to your own nipples is never going to end well. <laughs> exactly the sort of shit people would do at school. <laughs> uh, oh, I remember when we'd chain all the batteries together and touch them on our tongue and be like, ah, no. In 2010, Kyle Dubois was in the middle of an electrical trades class when he roped in a couple of friends to help him pull off this wacky stunt. Kyle clamped one of the live alligator clips to one of his nipples, a buddy clamped on the other, and a third buddy plugged in the cord. Now, it's worth pausing for a moment to consider how people often use the phrase, I electrocuted myself quite wrongly. Electrocuting yourself doesn't just mean that you give yourself a bit of a shock, it means you actually kill yourself through electrocution, right? It means that you kill yourself with electricity and you're likely to get a chance to share the anecdote later on. No. Oh. But Kyle is one of the rare cases where he can use the phrase accurately, as his heart stopped beating and he technically died for a while. Holy shit, that is mad. Uh, Who would do that? Uh, Who could possibly do that? I'd be like, oh, my nipples are burned. And he's like, nah, my heart stopped. <laughs> literally died. He was rushed to Wentworth Douglas Hospital in an unresponsive state, and although he eventually recovered from the ordeal, he claims to have suffered permanent brain damage from the accident. <laughs> They're like, no, mate, you, you were that way before, weren't you? <laughs> Look, you were attaching alligator clips to your nipples. You were never the brightest spark in the box of spark plugs. <laughs> Neither am I. Such a small brain. Allegedly. Allegedly on the, the stuff before, allegedly a small brain. Uh, you can't help wondering if he was already suffering from a mild dose of brain damage before he attached the live alligator clips to his own nipples. Same page, Danny and me. And maybe Sam, I don't know. Are you Sam? Probably not. Joke's on you, I'm into that shit! Kyle and his parents filed a lawsuit against the teacher, Thomas Kelly, seeking compensation for medical expenses on the allegation that he hadn't fully explained the dangers of electricity. But it was a messy case full of contradictions. At one point, Kyle and some of his friends all claimed that Mr. Kelly had dared Kyle to perform the shocking deed, promised him a bottle of Mountain Dew if he went through with it, but then Kyle later declared that it was, his, it was only his mates who were egging him on and Mr. Kelly was not aware that what was about to unfold in the classroom. Wait, was that going on in court? This is just for a laugh. They're like, nah, nah, nah. The teacher said, dared him to do it and said he'd give him Mountain you if he did and the judge is like you are aware you're under oath but if you lie it's perjury and i'll lock you the f up and they're like oh, okay i was that that was a lie <laughs> according to mr kelly himself i was talking about my fantasy baseball team with one student <laughs> mr kelly why aren't you teaching and then the next thing i know there was a commotion i heard you know an ouch and then i look over and i look and there's carl's and there's kyle going to the ground who remembers <laughs> Um, if I was Mr. Kelly, I guess under penalty of perjury, they'd be like, no, 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 yeah, I was talking about my fantasy baseball team. Rather than like, I was working on the finer points of quantum mechanics with one particularly bright student. <laughs> it's like, no, no, that was a lie. The case was ultimately dismissed on the grounds that Kyle was a willing participant and that Mr. Kelly spent a couple of years on paid administrative leave until the school cleared him in, his own, in their own internal investigation. I mean, that's harsh. But then it's also pretty awesome that you got two years paid leave and then they're like, no, 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 you were innocent the whole time. It's just two years of vacation. F***ing great. Hot diggity dog. But the next time you roll your eyes at a ridiculous warning on a product packaging such as this wheelbarrow is not intended for motorway use, this vanishing ink should not be used on legal documents, brass fishing hooks are harmful if swallowed, or please do not drink this printer ink, just remember that people like Kyle do need to hear this kind of stuff. Yeah, there are some insane warnings out there. Cleveland's man thought he could only be charged with burglary at night. <laughs> 
please. Some house burglars are so predictable, they may think they're being clever, waiting until the evening to carry out their raids under the cover of darkness, but it looks well dodgy to anyone who happens to spot them. Yes, but they're much less likely to be spotted because it's dark. 22-year-old <laughs> James Blankenship says he's got a blank brain, doesn't it? Uh, allegedly. From the Cleveland suburb of Willoughby, may have made, had a face that screams out trouble drug addict. Allegedly. But he wasn't daft. He knew burglary is only a crime that happens at night, and he knew that breaking into somebody's house looks far less suspicious if you just do it in broad daylight in full view of the neighbors. Except they know who lives there, and if some shifty drug addict looking dude is like, <laughs> they're gonna be like, let's call the police, shall we, just in case. Because <laughs> that like, guy doesn't look like Mrs. Jones, does he? Does he? James had been going through a rocky patch with his mother, who had banned him from visiting her home. So one sunny afternoon, having not seen his mum for over three months, James decided to break into her house, and he suspect it wasn't a social call. A neighbour who clearly didn't know her laws alerted the police when she, short, when she saw James climbing through a first-story window, and James was later discovered hiding in a crawl space underneath the house. James, mate, what are you up to? You're breaking into your mother's house and hiding in the crawl space? Why? Although I broke into my own house a few times as a kid, because I'd get back from school, no one be home, and I forgot my keys. I'd be like, ah, so I'd just try and break into the house, and most of the time I would succeed. I mean, I wouldn't break any windows, I'd just go round, try all the windows, hopefully one's open, and then there was a tiny, tiny window open, you'd just squeeze your way through that somehow. It was fine. Still, James probably wasn't too concerned, as he knew the burglary was perfectly legal in the daytime hours. It turns out he was wrong, though. What? What? The East Lake Police Department reported that James had spent the interview arguing that he had, it hadn't gone dark yet, and appeared oblivious to the fact that burglary is also classed as a chargeable criminal offence. During the afternoon, when the law was finally explained to him, James pled guilty to breaking and entering into his mother's house against her will. He was fined a hundred dollars and sentenced to 180 days in prison. <laughs> well, this seems a bit disproportional, doesn't it? Why did James's mum press charges? <laughs> 180 days is it? One, two, it's like six months in prison. Good lord. Okay, 120 was suspended, but that's still two months in prison. Holy sh. It's like a hundred dollar fine though. It's like, oh no. The judge is like, I sentence you to a hundred dollar fine. You're like, whew, whew, that was close. Where you just pay it now or what's up? And I was six months in prison. No, not the prison showers. Maybe James did know his laws, he was just a bit out of date. Apparently the original common law definition of burglary dating back to the 17th century described the act as the breaking and entering of the house of another in the night time with intent to commit a felony therein. So James may have done his research after all, he was just using source material that was a few hundred years old. Incidentally, if you really want to burgle a house without arousing suspicion, it doesn't matter what time of day you do it, just wear a nice suit. Nobody will question why you're smashing windows if you're wearing a nice, expensive suit. <laughs> I think that's absolutely a pretty legitimate argument. Put on a suit, maybe even like carry a clipboard or some <laughs> Nice briefcase. You'd be good. Ten-year-old Norwegian boy steals parents' car, crashes it into a ditch, tells cops he's a dwarf. He's forgotten his license. <laughs> Ten years old. Ah. In 2014, a married couple awoke early in their family home near Docker, about 68 miles north of Oslo. They found their 10-year-old son and 18-month-old daughter were both missing. Even worse than that, the car had gone too. I'm not sure how long it took them to figure out that both of these problems were connected, but not quite in a way that they might have first imagined. At some point in the middle of the night, the young boy had been gripped by a sudden urge to visit his grandparents who lived 37 miles away. Not wishing to disturb his sleeping parents, the boy thoughtfully decided to pop his 18-month-old sister in the back of the family car and make the journey himself. You are in big trouble, son. In a way, you have to admire both his gritty determination and the fact that he made it as far as six miles before veering off into a snowy ditch. That's quite impressive. After a snowplow driver later came across the scene, he alerted the police who found themselves dealing with an indignant little kid swearing blind that he was a dwarf who had carelessly left his driving license in his other jacket. The police went blind that though. Maybe it was the super Ted pajamas that gave the kid away. Uh, yeah, I mean, dwarves look like adults. That's the problem. It's like a 10-year-old looks like a 10-year-old. A dwarf looks like a dwarf. I mean, a, a dwarf looks like an adult. A short adult. Thankfully, neither of the children were injured and the car wasn't even seriously damaged. And in fact, Bard Christiansen, a spokesman for the West Oppland Police di District, later confirmed to the press that no charges of any kind would be filed. He told the press, We've talked to the parents and I'm pretty sure they're going to pay very close attention to both their children and their car keys in the future. Yes. Criminals have such an easy ride in Norway if something like this had happened in the UK. The kid would have been swiftly banged up in a boar stall for stealing a car, driving without a license, endangering the life of a toddler, lying to the police, and falsely impersonating a dwarf. I do find that unlikely. I mean, they'd just be like, no, it's okay. 
Please just take him home and maybe give him a whipping. Not really. Dublin lesbian in inflatable sumo wrestler suit assaulted her ex-girlfriend in gay pub because she waved a man at a man dressed as a Snickers bar. What is going on? There is a lot going on. Uh, assaulted her ex-girlfriend in gay pub because she waved at a man dressed in... Okay. Well, let's just get on with it, shall we? I'm sure Danny's going to explain this mystery. Like, it's so confusing. There's so many things to keep track of, my small brain can't handle it. I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand, bitch. I don't understand. I so there's quite a lot to unpack with that headline. No shit. Irish couple Sandra Talbot and Adrian Martin had been enduring a stormy off and on relationship for about three years before calling it a day in 2007. But three years later, it seems the tensions were still running high between the pair. Sandra claims that Adrian once turned up to a gay pride festival with a new girlfriend in tow, wearing custom t shirts designed to mock Sandra. Holy sh. One of the t shirts is alleged to have been blazing with the slogan, Who's Sorry Now? while the other read, Sandra is. Get over it. I mean, if I was Sandra, I'd be like, Really? Really? It's been three years. You care this much? That says more about you than it does about me. I'm, I've moved on. Like, I just don't give a shit. Like, what's up with you? Adrian denied this. Adrian. Is it Adrian? A D R I E N N E? Adrian? Don't know. Deny this allegation, and it does seem a bit weird that the new partner would happily agree with such an idea, yes. One night in 2010, Sandra and Adrian found that they were both attending, both separately attending a fancy dress night at The George, one of the most popular gay bars in Dublin. And Sandra's inflatable sumo wrestler costume was causing a few problems. Adrienne reckons that Sandra was deliberately bumping into her with her overinflated belly, leading Adrian to cry out, Watch where you're going with that thing. Sandra replied, Shut up and grow up! And later claims that the nature of her costume meant that she'd been accidentally brushing up against people all night. Adrian then spotted an old male friend in the crowd who, of course, was dressed up as a Snickers bar. While Adrian waved to her buddy, this seemed to agitate Sumo Sandra quite a bit. When maybe she thought Adrian was flirting with the guy and she didn't like it, or maybe just she just felt Adrian's arm was getting in the way. These people need to get their shit together. Whatever the source of the problem, Sandra's reaction was a bit over the top. She reached into the folds of her Sumo outfit, pulled out a bottle of Smirnoff ice that she'd hidden down there for safekeeping. Classy. <laughs> and lobbed it straight at Adrian's head. Classy times two! Uh, at this point, Sandra was escorted outside by security, but it must have been one of the most long-winded and comical pub evictions in history, as they had to slowly deflate angry Sandra's costume before she could squeeze through the exit. <laughs> Adrian claimed in court that she had been left with a large bump on her temple and was still suffering from pat- They took this to court? Holy sh I mean, I guess that's why we know about it. But just like, you had a fight. Get over it. Don't take it to court. Why? Sandra's solicitor made, uh, and that she was suffer still suffering from panic attacks. Sandra's solicitor made some flimsy attempt to claim that it would have been possible for his client to hide a bottle of Smirnoff ice in her sumo costume because the suit worked on an airtight seal. However, Sandra was fined 400 euros after being found guilty of assault and generating one of the most ridiculous headlines to ever hit the Irish press. Florida man really needs to up his game. Yes, definitely. 400 euros. Is that really worth going to? How much does it cost to go to courts? More than that. Am I right? If you'd like some fine beard oils as well, beardblades.com. Why not? Thank you for watching. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm permanently here, Sharon.